Hey, welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. And today, my special guest is Lila Kursky, who uh, actually, she has this delicious cookbook out. It's all about Lebanese cooking. And she's going to share with us all about her book. And we're going to ask her some some uh, some things about cooking for the holidays. So, Lila, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. And tell us the name, uh, the title of your book. Yeah. So it's Lebanese Cuisine. And um, actually, my mother wrote it about 50 years ago um, to memorialize the recipes of my grandmother. Uh-huh. Um, it was self-published for, for many, many years, and um, I really wanted to keep it alive, but needed to bring it up to date. So spent a lot of time um, updating the recipes, um, doing the photography with a, a buddy of mine, and um, trying to get it out, out to a wider audience. Oh, that's great. That's great. That reminds me of uh, when I first started studying cooking in Italy, I kind of started because one of my great aunts, I found her cookbook and I was really influenced by that. I didn't quite use it, but you know, a lot of my things are influenced by that, but that's wonderful that you were able, able to do that. So, um, you know, the holidays are coming up. Um, how does your family celebrate um, the Christmas holidays? Do you have any special traditions um, with the Lebanese cooking? Yeah. So especially growing up, um, the big deal was going to midnight mass. So before, yes. yeah, exactly. Um, and at that point, after, you know, one o'clock in the morning, you got to open one present and then the rest sort of for the rest of the day. But I just remember all the holidays with like all my cousins. I grew up in Portland, Oregon. Okay. And, um, just everyone, you know, came went to the my grandmother's house for a family meal. And I, I always associate all the holidays, especially Christmas and Easter, with just those huge family gatherings and then just a loaded, a loaded, you know, sort of table, table. for everything. Exactly. Not unlike, I was just going to say, sounds just like my my family exactly. tradition too. Sounds not unlike the Italian tradition. So are there, um, I was going to ask you like what your favorite recipes are in the book, but also wanting to find out like, are there specific recipes in the book that you remember for say the Christmas holidays? Always um, rolled grape leaves, which is sort of funny because, you know, the grape, fresh grape leaves aren't available in the right. winter, yes. but um, whether we preserve them or you can get them can. And that was always a really big deal, you know, kind of a festive thing to have on the table. Yes. Yes. Any, how about, always, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was no, just no, going to no, say no, there's okay. a mixture of the sort of like American traditional things, like a turkey and all the things yes. as well as all the Middle Eastern things. So the table sort of split personality. Yes. And again, that's how our table always was. My grandmother from Italy would have all the Italian traditional holiday things, but she always wanted to do the some of the American things too. So yes, it was a gigantic table of things. How about sweets? Because like, for instance, the Italian you know, traditional, we, we do have some cookies that are, it varies depending on where you're from, but the overall thing is this that it's called the panettone or pan and pandora which are kind of like the italian version of fruitcake but a lot different to anything like that in in um not particularly and it's interesting because especially in on um like a a middle eastern menu right. like dessert much later with coffee and so usually oh. it's like fruit after the meal because it's right. a heavier meal yes but, in terms of cookies, you know, bak baklava is always a big oh, deal. Oh, yes, of course. But my grandmother's um, butter cookies, and I'm trying to remember how we describe it in the book, I'll have to kind of pull it up, were always a really big hit. And I swear I keep, if she tried to teach me how to do those six ways to Sunday, and I can never get it the way she did I'm it. Sure it was she did. I feel because yes. when I've done it, you know, whether it's... Um, too much moisture in there or not enough. And I add up too much flour, it gets dry. And hers was yes. just right. 
But I think she wanted just the right amount to get it to the text that she wanted. But those butter cookies were amazing. Oh, my goodness. So that's what you would have. Yes, that stuff is is dessert that we would have, too, like after the meal. It's always fruit. So is it a tradition to have like fruit and nuts and then a dessert? Coffee with the sweets. Exactly. An hour later or so. Very similar to, yeah, and you need that hour later because <laughs> of all that food. <laughs> the process of everything. So it sounds like it's kind of the same thing where you sit around the table and you're almost eating for a few hours, correct? Exactly. Very it's just, similar. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, courses after courses sounds like the same Italian um, traditional traditional thing. So I know you mentioned that the recipes were your grandmother's, and then right. Yeah. yeah. So, so how, how the book came about was my mother, um, after graduating from school, went to work for the State Department, uh-huh. and think about like in the '60s, she would call home collect to uh-huh. to. She never learned how to cook. Uh-huh. And my my grandfather got so fed up with her that basically said, you need to learn how to cook or you need to pay for your own phone calls. And, you know, many years later, she decided to, my grandmother was a phenomenal cook uh-huh. and literally, and if I could describe this 1940s kitchen, you know, in uh-huh. the and my mom would grab whatever she was doing before it hit the pot and then formulated these recipes and, um, you know, as I took it forward, a lot of things, you know, like modern equipment, you know, cooks to different temperatures, food processors are available. So taking those core recipes up a notch to today has been kind of fun. Yes. And you were lucky that she actually wrote down the recipes or. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. a, a lot of um, a lot of I know a lot of my grandmother's recipes, both grandmothers they didn't really write down. And the only way you could get the recipe from them was you had to actually stay there with them when they made it and the kind kitchen. of pin them down. Yes. And say, well, that's how my mother, that's how oh, my that's mother, how, yeah, that's how I she see. did it. Exactly. Yeah, she it exactly. That was good. That was great that she did that. Cause unfortunately we only did that with a few recipes and uh, yes, you had to pin them down because they knew, as you said, by feel. And it was just amazing the way, you know, the the things that they knew how to cook and what to do. So you said, so that was your grandmother and your mother kind of pinned her down with getting the pin down the exact amount of ingredients for um, the recipes. So do, is there, um, like, I know in Italian cooking, we have certain regions that have certain specialties. Is that the same for Lebanese cooking or is it overall? I don't think so. You know, it's a really good question when I, um, you yes. know, so this is for my mom's side. And when I right. listen to my um, folks on my father's side, you know, they'll say, oh, it's just, you know, this because the, they'll, they'll, they've used the original book and they'll say, oh, it's just right. But we just do something a little bit different. But I think it's a nuance versus like a different specialty altogether. Like in Italy, you get really regional. Right, thing. right, and right. The same recipe, but slightly to someone else's taste. Oh, OK. Yes. So that would be the only difference. Yeah, you're right. In Italy, there's specific things some are very similar and then it just depends what region you come from the few different ingredients but you're right some are just totally like different you know different things but so overall do you have did you say what is your do you have a favorite recipe yeah i um there's certain things that i've got on repeat um definitely the the stuffed eggplant which i, I kind of do the easy way rather than taking the small ones which aren't very available i'll right. just take a globe of eggplant and then just layer it with the meat and tomatoes and then you serve that over rice uh-huh um, on repeat quite a bit i'll make my own bread uh-huh. and put it in the freezer um so just take out what you need uh-huh. and there's a um a cauliflower rice dish, which I have to say doesn't look like much, but mm. it's really tasty. And it's just rice, beef, onions, and a pinch of cinnamon. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's just comfort food. I don't know what it is. To, to look at it, you're like, I don't know, what, no, but it's delicious. Oh, it sounds, it does sound, so, sounds great. So what type of bread are you talking about? I know you said you make your yeah. own bread. 
pita bread. So oh, I'll make the pita, pita breads. breads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yes. Now I've never tried making my own pita bread. So is that a complicated procedure or? No, oh, not too bad. It, I mean, you've got these sort of layers of rising. So the bread dough's I presume a fairly standard dough. Right. Um, and once it rises, you'll, I, I, um, I weigh it out to get them really even. So about three ounces to a ball uh -huh. and then you let those rest and then you roll them out to a round, let those rest again, another 30 minutes. And then um, literally just fling them on the rack in the oven. It's oh. just it kind so of, a, and then they puff up and, um, the recipe in the book will say to broil them afterwards. And I don't do that. I just leave them cooked and uh -huh. then I put it in the freezer. And then when I, um, I just take what I need and I'll throw it in the toaster and then you get a little bit of the warm them up and then you oh, get a bit of that browning and yes. it's nice to have fresh bread. Oh, definitely. Is it, is the dough basically the same things we use for bread? Yeah. Wow. It's um, flour, yeast, um, a little bit of milk. Uh -huh. Salt, sugar. Uh -huh. um, it's interesting. My aunt will put a little bit of olive oil in her dough. Uh -huh. So I'm wondering if she's using water and olive oil versus the milk. Um, but I use whole milk because that's what the recipe says to do, which I should probably use anything. And right. um, it's just a very basic dough. I think it's in the technique of just letting it rise, which gets that pocket. I see. I see. Wow. That's really, really interesting. Yeah. I know, you know, with pizza, some people put olive oil in it. Some don't put olive oil. So I guess there's something there, whatever, you know, that different. Tender. Yeah, right? exactly. Just depending, but that's really, really interesting because I know a lot of people do like, including myself, like pita bread. So it's great to have, probably to have your own fresh, pita bread also whenever you want it exactly you can just have that and that's great for any time of the day i know i've had that like with a breakfast sandwich it's great mm -hmm. had a pita bread that way so that's great um so tell us now did this book just come out or is, has it yes, just been released it's going to be released next week on the 26th oh, wow. so it's uh -huh. going to be the day after I've, got, um, I've got the we you know the original sort of hot off the press and yes, but it kind of all layered out and then they'll release it next week. So which is really exciting for me. Yes, yes, um, it is. And um, I know, as I said, I know I've gone through the book. Is it just recipes? Do you have any stories in there also? A little bit of, um, of the descriptions of like how the original book came to be. Right. Um, the, the one thing that, you know, really is the, the primary reason for getting this out is just keeping those recipes alive and keeping those family yes. traditions alive. And in this book, I've um, I've become that person that gets everyone's old family photos, uh -huh. and so I'm able to incorporate some of those into the book as well. So a little, little bit of um, family history, not not perhaps too much, but um, but just wanted to bring like pictures of my mom and my uncles and my grandmother all all in there. Exactly, that's great. That that's really nice because it kind of gives a history to food, the, you know, the foods that people are making and. And it, it adds another kind of a layer to everything. So that's really nice that, that you have photos and some history also there. That's a really nice touch to, you know, to do in a food book. I always said, thought that was great because I always thought food is more rest than just like cookbooks are more than just throwing ingredients together. There's a lot of things involved. And of course, yours definitely is because it is related to your you know, your family history, but traditions and culture, which which is so nice. And I have to say, I, as I mentioned to you um, before we started recording, that I saw the, you know, went through the book and there are just some really delicious recipes. Some I'm familiar with, but some I really wasn't. And lots of combinations of ingredients that you're like, oh, I never thought of. Like yeah. you said, adding the cinnamon with the cauliflower. Now that's really interesting because typically, you know, cinnamon is something we use here for sweet stuff. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, but yeah, in Italian cooking, there are some other dishes they use cinnamon too in not typical sweet dishes. So that's really, really interesting as well. So tell everybody um, where can they find the book if they do want to get it? 
Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's right there on Amazon. So that's probably the easiest, quickest way. And then if there are local bookstores in your area, you can always ask for it there. Uh -huh. so, and it's, and the title of the book again is Lebanese cuisine. Uh huh. And it's um, by Madeline Fair, who's my mom. And then me, Lila Habib Kursky. Yes. Okay. And I wanted to ask you, because I try to ask all of my guests that are, have relationships to food, we all do in some way. What does food mean to you? If somebody asked you that, what would you say? Um, I think the first word is family. It really, truly is. Um, I feel like I grew up in the kitchen. You know, uh -huh. I do. I would help my grandmother, my mother. Um, I remember just sort of helping my grandmother and then having coffee afterwards. So it is, it's about that family community and building relationships um, uh -huh. is what it's all about. And, and um, sometimes it's just that community of sitting at the table. And I'll never forget a story when my, my son was only five, he went to a birthday party uh -huh. and they fed him and they had cakes and the whole nine yards. And as, as I picked him up, um, you know, I was thanking the other parent and my son says to me in front of this woman, well, what are we having for dinner tonight, mom? And she looked at me and she said, we just ate. And I'm like, it's about sitting at the table together. So exactly. it wasn't that he was hungry. Is this that to him and to me, it's about sitting at the table together as a family. Yes, that's wonderful. And you know what the, I, I'm not sure if it's a funny thing, but it's an interesting thing. Most of the, my guests that I asked this question to it's always related to like family, you know, what it means to people. And it, and it is, it, it always is. I know for me, you know, I have so many wonderful food memories, but they're family food memories, you know, and it just reminds you of special times you have with your family. So that's wonderful, especially during the holidays that, um, you know, I know it, it really strikes home, but really any time of the year, um, so thank you for answering that. Well, Lila Kursky, thank you for being a guest on the Maria Liberati show today. And, and uh, yeah. hopefully maybe we'll have you back another time. And the book again is Lebanese Cuisine, right? Okay. Yep. And um, I want to also especially thank my producer, Britton Roselle. And just remind everybody, I just want to tell everybody there is a uh, special Christmas concert for, you know, I always talk about Lava Fauna and the Epiphany. And if you're anywhere near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, there's a multicultural Christmas concert that's going to be done in many different languages for, it's called Family Friend friendly Sunday at the National Shrine of Our Lady Chestahova in Doylestown, Pennsylvania on January 7th at 3.30. I just want to remind everybody there they will be singing traditional um, holiday carols, Christmas carols in many in different languages. So it's always it's become a traditional and a wonderful event. Just wanted to remind everyone. And also um, Let's see, I guess I won't be talking to anybody until Christmas. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. And in the meantime, you can find me on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati and on Instagram at Maria Liberati on our new YouTube channel, The Maria Liberati Show, where you can also see this podcast in video. And uh, let's see, Vimeo.com, um, it's Maria Liberati there. You can look me up there. And my website, MariaLiberati.com, and my Gourmand World Award-winning cookbooks, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati. You can find them on Amazon and Kindle and at the publisher site, ArtofLivingPrimaMedia.com. And until next time, peace, love, and pasta. And... Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and much season greetings to everyone. Thank you.